Thank you for all, all, thank you all for being here today online also. I will start. Time to commit creating productive developers. But first, who am I? I'm Vesel Ahdenberg. I'm a senior software designer. I joined Solita in 2016 and I'm a front-end specialist. I like learning new things, games, miniature painting, and although I don't look the part, I hit the gym quite often. Lifting heavy things suits me. And one more thing, I dislike perfection. The what? The amount of software is growing, most likely exponentially. And we need more hands on development and maintenance. And while there are plenty of mechanisms churning out new developers, I think uh, currently the doubling time for developers uh, follows like Moore's law type pattern. So the doubling time is around five years. So if we now have 500 in five years, we have 1000 developers. And of course, new developers are actually not the solution. Productive developers are. So how can we create productive developers? There's a metric, time to commit. It measures time that it takes for a new team member after starting in a project when he creates the first valuable commit. It measures time, but it might indicate, I have no idea if it really indicates things, but it might indicate your code base or organization if you have adequate processes, test suite quality, all those positive things that we all should strive for in our day-to-day -day work. But I think it would be kind of moot for me to stand here and tell you to do your job. <laughs> I, I'm not going to tell you to organize your code base. I'm not going to tell you to refine your processes. Or I'm not going to tell you to improve the quality of your test suite. I'm going to tell you about one thing that we can all pitch in, and that is onboarding. All those things, organized code bases, those all require time and effort. So if it's not okay now, we need more time to actually make it work. But this is kind of, kind of cheap. Onboarding only requires some soft skills. So what actually is onboarding? I like this word. Open organizational socialization. We take new individuals and we socialize them into our organizations. It's a act of providing the necessary support and guidance for a new member to become a productive member, to ease him into the ease him or her into the daily routines. And in a modern environment, onboarding is a multi-layered process, going from all those abstract things like values, goals, norms, from the corporate or company level, all the way to the team level, increasing in concretization. And all levels in between are kind of their own microcosm of things that are more abstract. I reiterate, this is not technical skills, these are all soft skills. The goals of onboarding is to adjust the new individual in several ways or several aspects. How would one think about these things? Role clarity, self-efficacy, organizational culture and social acceptance. Onboarding is a human problem, and I'm, I am proposing a solution where we program the humans themselves. So, role clarity. It answers questions such as, what is my purpose? Who does what? What is expected from me? It describes one's understanding of their responsibilities and roles in a given organizational setting. The goal is to diminish or remove uncertainty. 
because uncertainty is a productivity killer. And no way is that more apparent than when refactoring old code bases without tests. Poor onboarding overlooks the responsibilities and roles in a given organization, causing a misguided sense of duty. If I do not know what is expected from me, either I overachieve or underachieve. Overachieving is nice, but it might not be sustainable. The way to tackle role clarity is to have an open and transparent communication. And if you in your project have a blurry vision of roles and responsibilities in your organization, consider this a call to action. Sort this out before you start onboarding anyone in your project. You cannot onboard into chaos. And also, and I cannot stress this enough, make it known what you expect from the onboardy. Now, self-efficacy answers questions such as, can I, do, can I do this, should I try this, or will I manage? It describes an individual's belief in their own capabilities. A developer with high self-efficacy does not shy away from challenges. Instead of challenges, the developer sees obstacles to overcome opportunities to learn and things to master, whereas developers with low self-efficacy only sees, well, challenges. They will always grasp to the low-hanging fruit, not realizing that they are stagnating in their skills when they are not actually self-improving. General can-do attitude in a team should correlate. It should enhance self-efficacy, or the feelings of self-efficacy. Do not try to break your onboardies. Do not go full metal jacket. <laughs> you are not supposed to break them down to build them back up. You are supposed to elevate an individual onto your level with their own opinions. Make it okay to try and fail. That's an important lesson. We all are kind of cumulative sum of our own mistakes. And of course, give the own body task where they can shine. Road to high self-efficacy is paved with small victories. Organizational culture. It answers questions such as, what is our purpose? Who are we? It contains everything, all the goals and values and norms, all those things. And of course, there's a caveat, there's plenty of social contracts involved when talking about co organizational culture. All those unwritten and unspoken rules that you have amongst yourselves, such as how do I communicate between hierarchies or between silos? Is over time something of a norm? Is it expected or should we avoid it at all cost? All those things that don't, not are, are not apparent to a new member of your team. Also, make it known that your culture, I hope, is alive and not static. Every new developer in your team kind of co-owns the culture. Everyone owns it and it evolves with the members. Make it known that the new developer has a chance to affect it. Social acceptance. Social acceptance answers questions such as, do I belong? Am I accepted? With the influx of new developers, this is more important nowadays. 
we have plenty of mechanisms to get into the field from diverse backgrounds, schools. Solita Academy is one. There are plenty of industry, people changing industries. So there's a strong emphasis on diversity and inclusion. Learn your common accepted language. Language that should not offend anybody, but that does not mean that you should walk on eggshells. Communicate openly and if need be, apologize. And of course, actually get to know your colleagues. It is a lot more, a lot more influential if you accept people who you know than those that you do not know. You can just go and there's a group of people, I accept those. But to accept the individual themselves, that's, that takes more effort. Have idle chats with your co-workers or team members. Talk about weather, about weekend plans, about your families. The positive thing about that is that you are actually learning how to communicate with the individual in question. You cannot learn to communicate without actually communicating. And of course, there's a strong, strong overlap with caring. And that has the side effect of becoming a positive feedback loop. People who care for each other go above and beyond when helping others. And there's a reciprocal effect in it. So, how do we actually onboard new developers? I'd say having no plan is the worst experience that you can give for a new developer. And of course, when you are creating the dev plan, it might make you commit more to the onboarding itself. And of course, there is no one-size-fits-all strategy for onboarding. It's a mix and match of different tactics and methods that work with the current individual. Everyone reacts to different things, different ways. So what I'm about to tell you are mere tactics that you should mix and match to create your onboarding process for a current in for an individual. And of course, you cannot improve your onboarding without asking feedback from the onboarding. So, formal onboarding. I think some of you might, might know this HR onboardings where they tell you about your benefits or you speak with developers who tell you about architecture, testing strategies, all those things. These are formal onboarding sessions to exchange information. We as developers should love this. These are reusable. They are, they are repeatable. When you have held one session, you can repeat it for another onboarding. However, there are risks in formal onboarding. For instance, you can easily overwhelm the onboarding. If you overwhelm them with information, then the re retainment of that information is kind of question mark. And of course, one thing to note that if you overwhelm them with information, you will never get those clarifying questions. Since in the session, the onboarding is probably not capable of asking those. And the further we go from the onboarding, formal onboarding session, the more socially awkward it becomes to ask those questions. I don't know what X means, and at this point, I'm too afraid to ask. Socially awkward. Mentoring. The show the ropes method. Take one more experienced 
team member and make a dynamic duo out of them. The goal is to aid the mentee or the onboardee in this case. This puts a lot of responsibility on the mentor not to turn the mentee into a carbon copy of himself or themselves. After all, you are trying to create an equal with their own opinions. This is achieved by offering guidance and support. Uh, when I have mentored, I usually do it with more junior developers. And that is actually not that technical. It is more emotional support than, <laughs> than could be thought. I'd say it's about 70% emotional support and 30% the technical side. But yeah, a lot of responsibility on the mentor since the mentor is in charge of adjusting those four aspects I mentioned previously. Then there's the organic onboarding, the fun method. Throw someone into a pool and see if they can swim. <laughs> I, have, I have been organi organically onboarded a few times, most likely due to lack of any onboarding <laughs> plan. And this, this is inherently very risky. Naturally, the team offers support when needed, but certain character traits are necessary for organic onboarding to be successful. Like being proactive and self-guided. Although those may not always be enough. But yeah, inherently very risky. So, I gave you four aspects that you must consider when onboarding. I gave you three different tactics that you can build your strategy with. In summary, I cannot stress this enough. Open and transparent communication is the key for proper onboarding. There is no one-size-fits-all strategy. Having a plan, yeah. But I'd say in the future, in technology, soft skills are priceless. Currently, most likely undervalued, but in the future, priceless. And committing to onboarding process will actually make your developers commit to the new developer. After all, onboarding is an act of empathy. You are laying the groundwork on which productive developers are grown. Thank you. Thank you, Vesa. It was very interesting. And uh, organizational socialization. I think we should change the onboarding to that, actually. Yeah. Let's see if we have some questions from the audience. Uh, I will have to reload this. <laughs> Um, so, to what extent should one onboard into the norms of communication hierarchy versus the new people challenge the norms? That's a difficult question. <laughs> <laughs> can I have another one? Uh, <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> uh, that's that's a mouthful. Mm -hmm. Wait, what what were you questioning me about? So. Uh, if you onboard people, yeah. then you are teaching them the norms of the work. Yep. But uh, you would also like the new people to challenge the norms. So to what extent should you teach them the way of working that you already have versus to let them challenge it? I mean, like I said, every new developer brings something new to the organizational culture. But of course, the culture is commonly owned. It is something that lives with those developers. And uh, it's a kind of nasty word to say, but it is a compromise mm. in, in pure essence. It is a compromise between those involved. But yeah, having new members affect the organization should be the norm. Mm. But I cannot answer to what extent no. they should affect it. 
Uh, there is another question. Is the, do you have any thoughts about hybrid work models that are getting more and more common now? Yeah, I have plenty of opinions about <laughs> hybrid work. Some of those are not, not for <laughs> the audience to hear. <laughs> but yeah, there, there is, for me, it is a lot harder to onboard on uh, well remote people. Yeah, It's harder to communicate with, if, if you only have teams without video, then it's kind of futile for me. For some, it might work. Yeah. For some onboarding, <laughs> onboarding people. But yeah, it, it's a challenge for me also. Yeah, I know how it feels because I, I joined Solita during the pandemic. So yeah. <laughs> I was onboarded on Teams. Uh, we do have another question. And uh, why is there emphasis on the soft skills? As I said, soft skills are the future. We got an influx of developers from diverse backgrounds and no developer is an island in the, under itself. We got unicorns and 10 act developers, but those are not the norm and they should never be the norm. Hmm? Creating productive developers require soft skills. You are actually creating teammates. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Well, thank you. If we don't have any more questions, then we thank you, Vesa. Thank you.